Hi everyone, I finally built my own render farm in this studio. As you can probably tell from the mess and the recent video, I've been doing a lot of like rebuilding of the studio space, setting up like a sort of NAS system, but it's a little bit different. I don't have a dedicated network assisted storage unit. Instead, I'm just using a laptop for now to manage like shared Windows folders amongst the space. Every workstation has an accessible folder space that everyone else can access. And I've also built a version control system as well. So if I wanted to do projects that required versioning, then any workstation in the studio can work on such things and then push it to the networking section, etc. Etc. So I'm going to tell you a bit about how I got the render farm set up. It did take me about 10 hours in the end or something like that, because when it comes to networking things, nothing ever really works the way you want it to. But to keep it simple, it's a flamenco based system. Flamenco made by Blender. It's their own like render farm system. I believe Dr. Sibrin is largely behind that. But flamenco alone wasn't really enough for me to get it working the way I wanted to. So I had to do a little extra bit of Python scripting on the side just to manage file movement from the computers after the fact. So this is not a tutorial on how to build your own render farm however i will be talking through like the areas where difficulties or things that weren't explained very well cropped up which might be important for you if you wanted to build your own so flamenco is really cool the kind of fundamental requirement for using flamenco as a render manager is that every computer you want to be a worker on the render farm including the manager computer which i believe can also be a worker if you want it to needs to have access to a shared storage space with the assumption that the location of that shared space is the same or referenceable from the same address from every worker. So with me choosing to do my network storage system using Windows shared folders with permissions based on like user credentials, that did fit the bill in the way of when you want to access a computer on the network in the file explorer, you just do two pack slashes, the name of the computer, and then from there you can access any of the shared folders. So I set Flamenco up with that in mind. I put the Flamenco manager program on the laptop I'm using as a test to be like a network manager. And the actual setup for the manager was fine. Although like little tidbit of complaints um, when you run the manager for the first time it opens up the flamenco window in the web browser but I noticed whenever I ran the manager in future times it didn't open the web browser so I had to go and like find the location myself in the flamenco manager settings you have these variables which act as like the kind of blender executable path now I believe there's two ways you can do this like to get flamenco to basically trigger blender to run on the workers one is to set up an environment variable for Blender, I think. That's not the method I used. And the other is to make sure that Blender is installed in the same place on every worker and then use that location as the variable. And that's what I did. So I made sure that Blender 5.0 was installed in the you know C program files, Blender Foundation, Blender 5.0 on every single one of the workers. Then I took that path and used that as the environment variable for Flamenco. What you need to do is you also need to install the Flamenco worker add-on on all of the worker machines. When you do that in the add-on preferences, there is a section where you put in the IP address for the Flamenco manager and the manager will actually tell you what the IP address is. So you can just look at it, write it down, take it to the worker machine, enter that in. And then there's a refresh button you press and that Flamenco add-on will automatically grab the shared storage location address that you put into the manager. So it kind of helps you set that up a bit. However, the add-on alone is not enough. This is an easy thing to forget. You also need to run a worker program that comes with Flamenco. So basically Flamenco has a manager and a worker program. You might think that you need to keep Blender open with the Add on that's not strictly true. The worker program is like a little listener. You leave it running in the background, it's communicating with the manager, and then it's waiting for receiving tasks. Another important thing to keep in mind is that when you do install Blender on a worker machine, make sure you actually open it, go to the edit preferences, go to system. So if you're using a GPU, you want to set it onto one of those render devices. Otherwise, it's just going to default to using the CPU. Now, I thought I did that for my workers, but it becomes apparent when you're actually running a job that like one machine is going way slower than the rest of them. So then I double checked and it turns out the setting didn't actually flip. So make sure you do that, set the setting, close Blender, and then just reopen Blender again and double check that it actually changed. I did have a problem with running the worker programs on the worker machines because by default it has this auto detecting system where it looks for the manager on the network. However, while one of my computers could auto find the manager, the other workers couldn't. Now it took a lot of time and the help of AI to kind of debug this issue, but it turns out I need to create 
a YAML file, YAML, next to the Flamenco worker. And then inside of there, I had to kind of manually override the address to help the worker point to the manager. In the worker console log, it does mention this YAML file, but it wasn't actually there, it, was, it didn't exist. So I made it myself and added that little override value. And then from there, it connected perfectly. Now I did have some problems because, like I said, I've been using this Windows shared folder system, which means the addresses look a bit weird. There's no like, you know, drive, like C colon slash slash whatever. It's just immediately slash slash, so backslashes, computer name, and then proceeding. And it seems as though Blender had a bit of trouble writing the rendering files to that. Weirdly, you could save a file from Blender to the shared folder location, fine, no problem. But if you took the same directory and set that as the output path for Blender, when it went to render, it would say that it saved it, but it just wouldn't be there on the shared space. And that became a problem when using Flamenco for the first time, like doing a proper job, because I noticed all the computers kicked up and they geared into action. And on the logs, it said, oh, you know, the frames can play saved here, and it was the exact correct network address. I look in the address and there's nothing there. In Flamenco, the Flamenco log says, oh yes, look, it's saved here but there's nothing there. And then Flamenco does this thing where it tries to render like a uh, FFmpeg like preview of the render frames. So when it actually got to that process, then it threw an error because it was like, where are the frames? <laughs> so that was confusing. What I later found was that when I looked through the files in one of the work machines, it had taken that network address and tried to recreate it under the C drive. So you'd go to the C drive and then the network computer name and then the entire directory address to get there. I was like, okay, maybe it's getting confused confused with like that directory structure. So what I thought was, okay, well, I will, instead of using the computer name, I'll use the network like IP address for the computer. And they, all these computers do have separate IP addresses. Now you can actually see that information in the Flamenco manager. When you click on a worker, you get some information about them and you can see the address for the individual units. So if we'll, as a test, I'll go into the Windows File Explorer and I will try accessing the same network files I want to access, but with the IP address instead. And again, a weird thing happened. On this computer, they could access it fine. On the workers, exactly the same address, it had trouble. And in fact, not only did it have trouble, but after a minute or so, it popped up with some weird like warning about a different device on the network. I think something else on the network is sharing the same IP as the network computer. And this one gets it right and that one gets it wrong. And this is where like my frustration with networking comes into play because I hate network stuff. So I thought, okay, I can spend ages getting frustrated and trying to solve that or we'll do this the easy way. What I did was I told Blender and the Flamenco like add-on settings, because you can do this on a per file basis in the output settings. There's a section for Flamenco. Instead of outputting to the shared folder space like you're supposed to, I set the output section to be local to every worker. So basically like C, and then I had a section called C landing renders or C landing rendering. So when Flamenco sends the job, it's just gonna render the frames to their local system only. Now Flamenco, is not capable, it seems, of moving frames from a location like that to a shared space afterwards because it's just assuming that the output is a shared space. So if I do have like a feature request in the Blender like Flamenco output settings, you have a choice of like two different rendering modes and one of them is a simple Blender render, but the settings for the output are quite limited. It would be nice if there was an option to do this method local and then move after the fact. But Flamenco for me is still really cool because even though the computers are rendering the frames locally, Flamenco doesn't throw an error. It still allocates the frames, so you know that every computer is going to get unique frames. It still tracks the progress, and even when those frames are done, it doesn't throw an error, despite the fact that the frames are in different places. It tells me it's completed, and it even tries to run that little video preview thing. And it doesn't produce a very good preview. It's only running it on one machine, as far as I can tell. So I let it do that, and Flamenco thinks, oh yes, this preview succeeded. But I know it didn't have access to you know, all the frames. So I'm like, yes, well done, Flamenco. You did it, buddy. <laughs> so what I did was I wrote a Python script that I run after Flamenco says the process is complete. And what it does is it looks inside of the render folders for every single worker machine because those have been exposed on the network. And then it basically ingests all of those to the manager computer really quickly. So it's, it's mostly automatic. So the way that looks for me now is I work in Blender. When I want to render something, I do save as, put it on the shared network. I then press the button in Blender that says submit to Flamenco. And I don't need to move from here. Flamenco manager running, picks up on that job, sends it to the others, they start rendering. It goes through the whole process until it says complete. And then really the only time I need to leave my chair and I can get around this is to just go over there and double click on 
pull renders my Python file and it goes whoop and pulls all the frames there. And the cool thing about that is the place where all the frames get pulled is also accessible on the network. So they will immediately be accessible here and there and elsewhere and available anywhere it's needed. Now I've only done small tests at the moment because I basically only got it finished at about midnight last night. But from the little tests I've done so far, it seems as though it affords me a 5.3 times speed increase on the test file I used compared to just using this 3090 computer alone. So I've given myself like a five times boost. One important thing to keep in mind there is that the chunking setting makes a big difference. So that's basically the number of frames allocated to a computer at a time because if you're doing every frame individually blender has to build the whole scene before you start doing the rendering but if you're doing it with several at a time it builds the scene once does the different frames and then basically you know discards it so you might find that it's often more effective to do it in larger chunks where there's minimal building time and then more rendering time per segment if that makes sense so there's no like perfect answer for the chunk value to use every time because some frames are more intense than others some computers are like much faster than others as well so say you gave like a weaker computer a really large chunk it's going to take ages for them to get through that and that may, may be a bottleneck so you need to find like a sweet spot for my render test scene for example i found that a chunk size of one made the render complete in just over five minutes but a chunk size of four made the render complete in one minute which is like a weirdly huge difference for just a small increase on the chunk size. I also tested setting it up to a chunk size of 10. There are about 30 frames in total, but 10 didn't have much difference compared to four. So do you see like it's extremely variable. So the question now is like how many computers am I using on the render farm? Only three or four if we're including the manager, but I'm not rendering on the manager. So there's this one, which is the 3090 computer. There's the audio visual workspace, which is the 2080 Ti. And then there's a laptop in the lab, which is the 37 mobile so it's not many the reason i've done it like this is because i wanted to keep the studio clean ironic given the mess but what i mean is like everywhere has a purpose and if i'm not using those computers at any point in time if i want to render then i might as well use them to speed up the rendering i do have old components and backup computers that need to be like refurbished so i suppose at some point i will refurbish them and or build some new ones with the spare parts and then when that's done piece by piece i'll be adding these extra nodes to the render farm also in theory with the way I've built it on the network, it's wireless as well. So literally any computer on the network, anywhere in the house, there's quite a lot of space in this house. I could just have like a laptop laying around a computer here, there, everywhere. And so long as I've set up the like worker settings on it, it will contribute to the render farm. So it is seemingly indefinitely expandable. I don't know if there are any limits that Flamenco has. But yeah, it's nice to finally be able to have like a private render farm going. So maybe with that in mind, I may be finally more inclined to do more animation type renders because I wouldn't have to like sit there and wait. But to be honest, waiting isn't really the problem. It was just, say if I want to play a video game on this computer, but I've also got a rendering running, that doesn't seem like a great idea. So that's what I've been spending time doing, like, you know, the last week or so, is I'm taking a tiny break away from Blender stuff just for a very short moment while I just build these systems and get ready for like the next leg of my work. So I've got audio visual workspace ready to go, music production, that kind of thing. We've got network storage. I've got versioning system, private, offline, all mine. And I've got a private render file. Sick. If you made it this far through the video, please put a computer related emoji in the comments so I can see who you are. Feel free to sign up to my Patreon to get access to exclusive files and increase the amount of time I spend working on free things for the Blender community every month. Otherwise, check out my products on codisol.online slash store. They're really good, especially Afterglow. So yeah, have a fantastic day and I'll see you next time.